Welcome everybody, Joe with ECRM here, and I have with me today Elise Thompson from Candy Industry Magazine, and she was one of the moderators of our Thought Interaction Pod roundtable discussions held yesterday during our Candy Planning Every Day and Summer Seasonal Virtual Session. So Elise, thank you for joining us, and I'd love to cover some of the takeaways from the roundtable discussion, but... I guess to start off, can you give an overview of what the topic was? Sure. So the session that I moderated was about online candy sales and what um, it means, especially in terms of the pandemic, especially since because consumers um, turn increasingly to uh, online shopping during the pandemic because they don't want to go into brick and mortar stores or the government says they can't. So it's definitely become more important for um, all food manufacturers, not just candy manufacturers. That's interesting because a lot of times candy is an impulse buy. You see them at every single checkout in a grocery store, and now it's turned into more of a deliberate purchase. Or are they kind of turning it into an impulse buy online in some ways? That's the, the million-dollar question because people, again, fewer people are going into grocery stores. Fewer people are going into convenience stores to grab a candy bar or a pack of gum when they buy gas. So it's tricky in, in getting, the, getting those sales. Um, the big thing that I think candy manufacturers are doing is relying more on their online presence to, to build awareness, whether that's through promoting their products on social media or really beefing up their email marketing campaigns so that way they can get the word out. But um, it, they're having to come up with some creative solutions in terms of marketing and in packaging sizes just to, to recoup some of those sales. Now, are they selling directly from their own sites or are they using third-party vendors? Um, I think there's a mix of both. Um, some of the, the participants in, in the session said that they were very glad that they had really focused on um, building their online presence and building their direct-to-consumer sites before the pandemic hit because it became crucial to have those. Um, the trick is getting um, people to buy enough to justify the shipping costs, especially cold shipping, which is important when it comes to chocolate or any candy that might melt. So um, it's a balance between that. And then um, there are some manufacturers working with third parties, um, apps like Instacart and Postmates in order to get um, product out to people who don't want to leave their houses. Yep. What about, oh, you mentioned the melting factor, right? Chocolate. I'm sending some chocolate to somebody in Arizona in the summertime. How does that work? Do I put dry ice in it? Or? Yeah, so um, some actually companies won't even ship during summer months if they make chocolate because they don't want to risk the product melting and then having it reflect poorly on their brand. So some companies won't even ship at all. Um, otherwise, it's really, really using a lot of dry ice and packing it really well to make sure that it um, you know, stays cold and stays intact. But, um, and then that requires a really quick shipping time and then more shipping costs as well if you're doing it overnight or only in two days. So it's definitely a, a tricky proposition in the summer months. Yes, it has to be. So volume wise, I mean, are package sizes, you know, are they just shipping larger package sizes to justify the shipping costs? Yeah, and that's one of the things that I asked about is are these manufacturers shipping one or two ch chocolate bars or... Are they going to, or do they have to do bigger sizes to justify the shipping costs? And a lot of them said that they won't do a couple bars just because it's not worth it. Um, so some of the manufacturers were coming up with variety packs and um, different fun things that they could do. So that way um, the customers would buy more and they could justify the shipping costs. Um, one participant mentioned putting most of the shipping costs um, in the online price. So that way, at the end, when it's only a few dollars for shipping, it doesn't seem that bad. Because if people already put it in the cart, they're likely to buy it. So I thought that was a really interesting way to at least get the, co the cost covered, but um, make sure it's more palatable for the consumer. Gotcha. Are they working with Amazon? Some of these suppliers are on there? Yes. Um, Amazon, is the way it sounds, is kind of like... Um, a double-edged sword almost because Amazon is a great retail partner can um, really help build brand awareness but they said that there is difficulty in making sure there's enough inventory available to get it shipped and then there's also the issue of third-party resellers um, which means that if you sell your candy or your bag of gummy bears for $2.99 online someone else can buy that and then resell it on Amazon for $6.99 
And the issue is they might not take the care in making sure that is packed properly. And so when the product gets to the consumer, that reflects poorly on the brand, even though they had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. So that's also an issue that some manufacturers were encountering. So with this, you know, shift to online, are they also, you know, focusing more on social media and digital marketing to kind of push the awareness? Yes, absolutely. That's the, the biggest way to, to build an, an audience and, and build engagement. Um, one participant even mentioned working with influencers to get um, product out there, you know, by leveraging the following that these folks already have, they can build brand awareness. Um, so that was interesting to me because I didn't even think about using them, but I guess it can be really beneficial, especially among people who, who look to these influencers as, um, you know, a guide for things that they can do in their lives. So I guess yeah. that's the opportunity there. It works in cosmetics. So I'm guessing I didn't even think about there being candy influencers, but you know what? There's probably some for every single category. Right. And, you know, I feel like, especially if it's a certain kind of person who's, do, who's an influencer, they can um, recommend all kinds of products from beauty to candy to snacks to, to anything else. Yep. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, thanks again for moderating the roundtable. Always great to have you at our sessions. And I hope you uh, have some great meetings later on today. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having me. It's been a, a real pleasure. I appreciate it.